Good morning, everyone. Happy International Women's Day. I'm excited to have a powerhouse woman with me whose birthday we're celebrating as well. So happy birthday, Madeleine Weiss. Um, she's not far from my son. So I'm also jealous. Um, open my kiss for you. Yeah, thank you. As all moms, we, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I'm excited to talk to you today because I, I know all day, all week, all month, and every day we should be celebrating women. Um, but you yourself are a psychotherapist, board certified executive career, life coach. I mean, I love when I read a bio and it's like, you know, the hats, the, the many hats, um, author, which we're going to talk about. Um, but one of the specialty of you is making sure that when people are passionate about what they do, but also keeping them sort of screwed on down their path, down their journey without sure. getting burnt out. Yeah. And so I, I sort of laugh to myself with all the hats that you wear, because I, I sort of think, well, <laughs> you know, you know, mom, wife, you know, we all try and juggle all these balls. So that I'm, that's one of the reasons I was excited to talk to you today, because um, I do think we can talk about men in a minute, but I do think as women who, whether you're a stay at home mom, which is an incredibly hard job, um, yeah. or a working mom, young girl starting your career, how do you toss all these balls and hold it together? So right out of the gate. Hi, everybody. Here's the thing. First line. Do I ask the hardest question first? No, no, no. <laughs> I love the question because in a nutshell, and this is the first line of the book that I'm so happy to tell you all about. A great life depends on a great fit between who we are and the environments in which we live and work. That was always adaptation to the environment. That's why we're here to even be talking about this. That was always true. It's as true as it ever was today. And the secret, and it's wonderful, is that when you are in that kind of alignment, you have energy that you never even knew was possible at that level. Mm -hmm. So actually, um, a case comes to mind of um, someone who is a female attorney and she, you know, just crawled into working with me as miserable as she could possibly be. And when she did this, you know, front end part of figuring out who she really was, not who everybody said she should be, or even who she thought she should be, but who she really was, she realized, and this is not necessarily the case for everybody, but it is for her. And that's what really mattered, right? That her family meant everything in the world to her. With that came a realization that this job she thought she hated, she was in some kind of regulatory affairs. You cannot, just as I say it, you can only imagine. Right. It is that might be for someone who doesn't find it otherwise. And she realized that this job she thought she hated was really nourishing this family, herself included, that meant more to her than anything. And all of a sudden, I swear I'm not making this up, all of a sudden she grew to love this job that she thought she hated and was so filled with energy she never had before because she wasn't feeling stuck and hopeless and helpless anymore. And she put together, this is one of my favorite stories, a side hustle that she involved her husband and her son in. So the family is now doing this thing uh -huh. together. And she knocked that out of the park in, I would say, 12 weeks. And I said to her, because the book is getting to great g.r.e.a.e. Mm -hmm. And the T is for tackling the resistance that comes down the pike because it's normal and it's natural and 
there's a great book called The Big Leap about that we, right, can only go so far. And I said to her, so what are you gonna do when the resistance hits you like a ton of bricks? And she said, I have so many tools in my toolkit now that I never had. I'm not worried at all. How did, how did she with you break that down? Um, because sometimes people come to the realization, the opposite, that it really is the job and they're doing it because they've been doing it or um, it isn't really the right place. And they're spent, you know, we spend a lot of time and energy in our work world. I always say, like, thank God I love what I do because I do it all day long and most of the time into the night, <laughs> but I love it. And, and so I think, you know, when you talk about, and I love that a great life depends on a great fit between who we are and the environment in which we work and live. And I wrote that down in my research notes, because to me, it, it just, it, it hit me. It made sense. Like, you know, to be happy, you, it's like a sponge. You know, we, our kids feel that, our friends feel that, oh, you know, so, so if you're in a bad mood, that's, you know, people feel it. And if you happen to be a CEO of a company, you're affecting everything and everyone mm -hmm. in the company. And I absolutely agree with you, but here's the thing. Now hear this, because this is really important. Ladies, you don't want to make decisions, major life decisions from the suffering part of the brain. Those decisions have to be made once the G is for grounding. It's grounding in the belief. It doesn't have to be like this. There are solutions. You may not know what they are now. So don't even do anything right now because you don't know. You don't know now, but you get grounded in this belief. You're going to figure this out. And all of a sudden, everything begins to lift. And when that happens, you take a look at yourself first, always, and then you can make decisions about whether to stay or go that are going to serve you well. But these, I can't stand another minute of this pain decisions, I think are not anybody's best friend. Yeah, I think they're that immediacy, which we all tend to live by. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I often say the grass is not greener. It's just green over there. It's it just, you know, and I try, you know, I've always tried to say that to my kids, you know, when they're going through a hard time and they're like, oh, I wish this or I, I'm like, the grass is not greener. Just well, John kabat says it, <laughs> says what you're saying, wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. If, if you want where you go to be a different and better experience, we very often have to rearrange the furniture on the inside first. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, a, as you can tell, a big fuss out of that because you can't find the right environment once you're coming from a plan, place of strength in yourself mm -hmm. and, and knowing. So, so what, I, and, and I think this is the hard part. Um, and I think it's one, recognizing that, but also then the next step My of, I'm smiling because that's the R. G. Okay. So, you know, you know, recognizing, hey, I've done, I've done therapy. <laughs> I believe. But, you know, recognizing that, but, but also, is it, you know, is it saying I want to go here, recognizing I want to go here, but also, you know, figuring out, you know, how do you, how do you do it? Well, the E is for exploring. So once you recognize- I haven't even read your book yet. What? I haven't even read your book yet. I'm doing well. <laughs> I know, I know. 
people are saying really nice things. I, I, I want, okay, so wait, before we can go, when is, we, we started talking about it. The book is on pre-order right now, everyone. Go to Waste. Cents. What? No, oh my God, 99 cents. I'm, I gotta order, I'm gonna order it today. Um, I'm Thank looking right here in my notes. Um, Madeline, Madeleinewise.com. I'm spelling it because it's the most beautiful spelling. M-A-D-E-L-A-I-N-E, Weiss, W-E-I-S-S.com. I, it's in my notes. If you're watching, it's already in my notes. You, know. you can actually get it from there or you can go directly to amazon.com. And if you put getting to great in, you have to use the dots. Otherwise, it didn't come up for me if I didn't use the dots. Okay. So, and it's um, just for the next day or two. I don't know about the third day. Um, we're having that 99 cent sale. But anyway, back to you. You did. You hit the nail on the head. And maybe we want to talk about the differences between therapy and coaching. Because yeah. I, on purpose, morphed. I had a very classic training in psychodynamic psychotherapy mm -hmm. and I'm very glad that I did because I think it really fortifies what I do but I did morph over to coaching because I thought there were some shortcomings to straight psychotherapy so I don't know if that's something yeah no say. let's talk about that because I you know I often am lucky enough to um, talk with different types of coaches in this um um, platform. And um, I always sort of give this sort of line, like a therapist, you have to find the right one. And like a coach, a business coach, um, a creative coach, you need to be working with the right person. Exactly. And um, I have so enjoyed the different coaches that um, you know, I talk to because I, I, first of all, I want to get on all their lists because I, I feel like I've been fortunate enough to say, oh, I need this one. I need a little of this. I need a, so it, it's, it's been magnificent, but tell me, because I don't think I have spoken to someone who has done the transition. I'm trying to think right now and no one's coming to the, but I, I would, first of all, love to know your transition and why and then I mean I think that's a real huge benefit. Howard Gardner who's the multiple intelligences guy at Harvard said that I had epistemic hunger and I was like okay and then I went home and looked it up you know because I didn't really know what he was saying there um, so we didn't even mention I think that I have an MBA also and that I've been studying at Veda Vedanta pre-Hindu tradition for over 20 years. So there's like this um, epistemic hunger. There's this hunger to know as much as I possibly can from right. every different way of looking at these things so that I can serve you all mm -hmm. the very, very best that I can with, with as much understanding. So I read a lot of brain science and I just wanted to come back to, you said about um, finding the right place for you. The E in great is for exploring. Right. And that's really the fun part. And then people have to take action after they've done the fun Explore. part of dreaming mm -hmm. and that sort of thing, which is, I think, uh, maybe a little less fun. It's like, oh God, I have to make that phone call. I have to redo the resume. I have to. And I would imagine that's the part, and I'm going to, I'm going to interject. That's the part where someone like you as a coach is so helpful because we often need that little push, um, the work through the work and, you know, whether, whether it's a diet, whether it's going for a walk, whether it's your business, yeah. you need someone sometimes to be accountable for. Now, so which, the thing, to your question about the difference between therapy mm -hmm. and coaching, I realized, and the more I learned about brain science, the more I realized it, that a lot of times, and I think it's got better, but a lot of times people will sit in therapy for a very long time 
and the room is filled with compassion and lacking action. Yes, yes. So, so people are feeling understood and those of us who may have been starved for that can't get enough of that. But you could sit there your whole life being understood and nothing changes. Right. So coaching is a very action oriented, mm -hmm. future focused, positive kind of thing. It's like, it's strategy. Mm -hmm. I tell people, we're not talking illness here. We're talking life strategy. Where do you want to go? How are you going to get there? And mm -hmm. what's be in the way? So it's interesting about what you say with this, and I love that because, um, and like I said, I, I've gone to therapy and I think it's super helpful, but I'm such a doer and there have been times where I've gone to, in therapy, talked about business and I, I did love my therapist because it, it, and one of the reasons why I say it's important to find the right one, it wasn't coddling because that's not what I needed I needed her to say well go do it how are you going to go do it the light the fire and but you're right that's not the norm per se of a therapist and now it's really fun because I do work with a business coach who it's all about the action plan um so it's at the end of every session we do action steps and then this other thing that coaches do, when I first became aware of it, I didn't like it because it seemed like fishing for compliments to me. But at the end of the session, there is this question, what value did you give yourself today that you mm -hmm. move forward with to keep yourself moving and on track and delighting in what you're doing, if that's possible at this point. And it's a very helpful thing because it crystallizes the learning. So it's not a big mush, you know, so. So Madeline shared with me um, before we were talking a little bit about her childhood. And yes. I think this makes sense in the 15 minutes I've known you that <laughs> you're a doer and you're a fixer and a helper of people. Thank you. Yes. And I, it, it's just really fun when I um, meet someone even over Zoom. Like I, I can feel the energy and I felt it like the minute I started talking to yeah, you. You too, by the way. Thanks. Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I do, I think that happens when you, you know, and and it, I, I can't wait to read this book because I, I really think that, um, you know, maybe it's sunny out in Michigan right now. I'm excited. Spring is coming, but I think that we're looking for action and doing. And even though, you know, believe me, I'll give my COVID masks on everybody and be safe and all of that, but we're ready to do, we're ready to sort of change some trajectory How much fun. of, you know, but it's scary. I actually um, posted this morning, it's on my website right now, the latest blog, I found this, like I said, I read a lot of science. Yale put out a study that to maximize, so like if you wanna solve a problem, you need to have the learning brain turned on. Uh -huh. And if you're not in your discomfort zone for 70% of the time, the learning mm -hmm. brain says, everything's cool here. I don't need to do anything. And it turns off and you don't have access to the solution producing part of your brain so we need courage yeah. to be ready willing and able to actually be uncomfortable because we're not set up although they say that um rats in a cage if if they don't have their their little toys and whatever yeah. their little amusement park they eat each other or something because they're so <laughs> bored. So I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't have said that. <laughs> That's hysterical. But I do, I, you know, I have read studies like that too about being uncomfortable. And it's really interesting because in the position I'm in as a publicist, I often will say to clients, okay, well, here comes the uncomfortable part, you know, because yeah, people do their day job, but then I stick them in a media situation, which isn't necessarily 
you know, what they want to do. Like you're, you're about to do the book tour world and you're probably far more comfortable speaking in an audience setting or zoom or whatever, but you know, I've done, I've done a few, few television spots. And it's like, oh my God, do I have to? <laughs> yes, you have to. No, not my thing. <laughs> yes, you have to. And here's my lecture that nobody knows your business better than you, so you'll be fine. <laughs> but and and I and my clients who might be listening, my clients who are listening have heard me say it often and 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 a lot about that. But the truth is that it's good to feel, get uncomfortable. Like this, when I first started even doing this, my, you know, my kids laughed at me. They're like, what are you doing? You know? And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, you know? And so it, it, it's definitely uncomfortable. Which is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, they say if you're not uncomfortable, you're not doing anything. Well, I I think it, there's that exciting part of it too. Um, but also that, um, you know, I, I'm a believer in making lists. So like sometimes I start my list with the things I don't want to do and try and check them off quickly, okay. you know, it, you know, so like that strategy. And so it's, people have different, str- like some people put it at the bottom and I, I often don't put it at the bottom because it's sort of like working out. I can think of a million reasons not to work out then. And it's like, if it's at the bottom. The counter to that one. And yes, I totally get that. And then there are other people because we're all different and we have right. to that way who say if they knock off the low hanging fruit first, they're pumped to get right. the rest done. So whatever. Well, so I, that's true. That's true. And I'd say I'd probably mix it up for that reason. Um, tell me what a little bit more about what we might, because I want to promote the book, especially in the next couple of days, but tell me a little bit more before we go, what people will learn in the book as, and what they'll, their action plan will be. So every chapter starts off with a quirky little story from my life. And you can only imagine, right? Um, I love it. Thing that I was. And then there's lots of theory and research in the middle of the chapter. And every chapter will end with a case example and an exercise for the reader's use. So I just pulled out a piece of paper that has my table of contents on it. Okay. The first part is getting to great at work. And it starts with who are we and who are you? It talks about the environmental misfit that we're all hardwired for. Our Mm -hmm. brains were built for an earlier, much different time your boss who's angry at you right now, or someone in your house who's angry at you right now is not going to eat you or kill you, but it feels that way. So the third chapter is other people, heaven or hell. Then there's a chapter on managing your mind. I have a whole chapter, you you can tell just by talking to me why I would, on mastering your mouth, like when to speak and not to speak and how to speak. No, I need that one. <laughs> I need that one too. So that was fun to write. The next, and my the girlfriends next. and I call that no filter. <laughs> right. right. Well, people can get identified to to like sort of a way of being graceful, mm-hmm. and they get attached to the grace identity, and that's in the book where mm-hmm. I almost died from trying to be graceful in the ER when I should have raised the roof and didn't. Anyway, so getting to great in life talks about work-life quality, the tyranny of time. There's one on uh, concerning money. And then there's a whole chapter play. And so it's everyday life issues that we're all- I love it. I I love it. The book is getting to great, G period, R period, E period, A period, T period, five step strategy to work and life. Um, and I think that it's an incredible 
really important time to read this because one of the things that caught me too was the fact that so many of us are working in our life environment mm. and being able to think about one, how we're going back to work environments, but also, you know, that separation and we're not doing that great of a job. Um, those who have come home to work, that isn't going to change so much. Even, even out of a pandemic, they say a lot of people are going to stay, you know, working at home and we need to be able to teach ourselves again and younger people how to do that work and life. Um, I, just that finished, I just finished up working with a couple who are not used to being in, you know, <laughs> close proximity as they have been lately. Yeah. And they put together, this is the first time I did this actually, they put together their communication contract and they went from, they made a shift from living in right and wrong to living in how can I help soothe the anxiety of this mm -hmm. person that I love. And they did such a bang up job. I was Support. Up, and I was just so happy for them. And every client that I have who's married, when they upgrade themselves, they upgrade the relationship. Everything. Sure. Everything, everything is connected to everything else. Well, so. again, I, I wrote it down. Managing your mind through this simple, repeatable process, finally, finally knowing how to enjoy and maintain high performance in all areas of your life without burning out mm -hmm. because your great life depends on your environment. And I, I just, I mean, I, I'm really excited to read it because I, I felt, I felt very connected to how you, how you speak. Um, so I, you know, and, and I, I don't just say that because I'm interviewing nice you. Birthday present, thank you. I, I can't make. I, I, as I like to say, I can't make this crap up. So like, I'm very. You, you, you said to me at, when we weren't on that you're that the way you are is authentic. Well, that's me. I, I say what I, I say what comes to mind. Um, I'll probably never have a talk show for that reason. <laughs> So I'll keep, uh, it's okay. I, I'm not really aiming for that. I just, I love meeting people and I'm, I, I am really excited. I think that this is a great, well, I, please come back anytime. I would love to. And um, we probably will have to have coffee when I get to Washington, DC. God knows when that, I'd like to. Are we having coffee? We are having coffee. Yes, Ho definitely. Hopefully in person. <laughs> yeah, for sure, when you're coming. I am very, I'm very excited to come. My husband and I are just discussing that we haven't been there in a while. And uh, so people, I, have, I was living in Boston for over 45 years. And a friend of mine wanted to come visit. And she said, there's so much going on there. It's so icky. I'm scared. I said, come. This was before, right before the pandemic. I said, it's gorgeous here. Oh, it's lovely. not like it is on TV. You won't even feel it. Yeah, no, I, so I love. Came, and it was wonderful. And I, I mean, I love, I mean, I have a daughter in New York, a son in Washington, a son in Chicago. My children have picked. Mag yeah, my kids have picked magnificent cities. Yes. Um, I used to travel to Washington a lot and I just, it different than New York it, in a different way. It's, it's one of my most favorite cities. I'm so glad he's there because I just love walk. It's, it's very different than New York walking around, walking around Washington, DC. And it, um, it me, yeah. which surprised me because I was used to seeing it on CNN and it didn't look that green to me. But it's very no, it's and and just the streets and the history. I don't know. I love the history. Like I said, that's why I feel like it's such a different type of city than other big cities. I, I don't know. So I'm living, I'm living in a historic landmark that has a Trader Joe's on the bottom floor, and I said 
What more could a girl ask for a historic <laughs> landmark with a Trader Joe's? Don't, don't tell my children that. <laughs> they all live within walking distance to Trader Joe's. <laughs> that is, <laughs> they could all be like on their TV commercials of walking distance. In fact, when I, I'll just share this that when I when they call me. They're like, I'll say like, what do you want for your birthday? What do you want for Hanukkah? They're like, can you just send us Trader Joe's gift cards? I'm like, done. <laughs> How easy is that? I'll pay for your groceries. <laughs> anyway, everyone, please visit MadelaineWeiss.com. It's like I said, it's on this link and um, take a look. She offers an amazing variety of things to look at on her website, but also the new book. Free stuff. Free stuff too. Lots of, well, for sure. Um, stay in touch. I look forward to seeing you. Sure, for sure. Thank you. Good luck with the book. Bye, everybody. Happy birthday. Thank you.